Hello and welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be talking about Python strings, and this is going to be part one of a series of videos that will be covering the topic. So let's jump right into it. So like I said, this video is going to be about strings. But before we talk about strings, I want to talk about the broader topic of data types. If you're learning any programming language, Python included, you will come across something called data types. See, when you're actually writing code, your code is most of the time reading data, processing data, and outputting data. So there are two parts of code. There's the actual code, the actual logic that you write, and there's also data that you're dealing with. This data has different types. So if we take Python as an example, one very popular data type is the numerical data type. A numerical data type represents numbers. So for example, the number one, the number five, the number 3.2, five to the power of three. All of these are numerical data types that you might want to use in your program. There's also another popular data type that we call a Boolean data type. And a Boolean data type is something that represents data that can only take one of two values. For example, if I ask you, is five greater than three? Your answer would be either yes or no, right? So it's just two values that, that your answer can have. So a Boolean data type in Python can take either the value true or the value false. Another data type that is extremely and widely used is the strings data type, a string. And a string is a data type that is used to represent text. It's used to represent textual data. For example, if you want to represent the data hello world in your program, the text hello world in your program, you need to use strings, okay? These data types that I just mentioned are not only found in Python, but you will find them throughout all the different other programming languages that you might come across. Of course, Python will have additional data types that we will also talk about in future videos. But for this video and the next few videos, we'll be focusing on strings because strings is such a rich topic and there are many things to talk about. So let's begin. So I just told you what a string is. It's a data type that is used to represent any text, okay? But the way I want you to think about strings, the way I want you to visualize strings, is I want you to visualize strings as a sequence of characters. A sequence of characters. What do I mean by characters? So a character could be an alphabetical letter, the letter A, the letter B, any alphabetical letter. It could also be a number, the number one, the number two, the number three. These are also characters. And it can be a special character, like your hashtags, your dollar signs, your percentages. These are special characters. So any of these characters, put them in a sequence. This is what a string is. So any sequence of characters can be a string. And we will talk later about why this mindset of visualizing strings as a sequence of characters is very important. It will make understanding more advanced concepts easy for you if you think of a string this way. Okay, now the question is, how do we actually represent strings in our code? Let's say I want to represent the string hello world, and I want to store this string in a variable. Let's call this variable message. Let's see how we can do that. So to do that, we say message is equal to hello world. So as you can see, in this case, we are enclosing our string, our text, with double quotes. And this is important. If you want to represent a string, you need to enclose your string by either double quotes or single quotes. So for instance, um, let's first check message, and it tells you that the message variable has hello world. And if I want to define the string using uh, single quotes, you can do something like this, and it's pretty much going to give you the same result. So either way, you have to enclose your string 
with double quotes or single quotes, but make sure that the quotes are matching. So if you do something like this, message is equal, and then double quotes, and then hello world, and then single quote, this is not going to work. As you see, the Python interpreter says, hey, this is a syntax error, you can't do this. So it's up to you to use single quotes or double quotes. Just make sure they're matching quotes. Now I want to introduce a built-in function in Python that is going to be very useful from now on, which is the type function. I understand that you might not know what a built-in function yet, but I promise I'll talk about it later. But for now, I want you to know that if you want to ask Python, what is the type, what is the data type, of a specific variable, you use the type built-in function. So for example, if I want to know what the type of message is, I say type and then open parentheses, and then I put the variable name in, and then I close the parentheses. This is basically you asking Python, hey, I have this variable message, and I want to know what data type this variable is. If you press enter, it tells you, hey, message is a string class. So ignore what the class is for now because this is also an advanced topic. I don't want to confuse you, but str is a short for string. So Python is telling you, hey, this is a string. The variable message is a string. If you, for example, say, what is the type of the number one? It will tell you it's an integer. An integer, as we will see later, is a numerical data type. But if you say what is the type of one, but one is enclosed between two double quotes, it will tell you it is a string. Okay, because remember, one can also be a character. So if you enclose one in double quotes, Python is going to treat it as a string. If you don't enclose it, in double quotes or single quotes, it will be treated as a number, as we will see later. But what I want to introduce here is the type built-in function. So make it a habit now, when you're learning about data types in Python, to use the type function to be able to ask Python what is the type of a specific variable. Now I want to move into another topic, which is called string indexing. So remember, I said you can think of a string as a sequence of characters. How can you ask Python, hey, I want to, I want to read the third character in the string message, or I want to read the first character in the string message, or the last character. Maybe you want to do something with these characters in your code. So you want to be able to index, to go into the string and read a specific character within that string. So let's see how we can do that. Let's take hello world as an example. On the screen, you can see how we can think of hello world as a sequence of characters. And each character will have an index, which is the position of this character in the string. And this position starts with zero. This is very important. The first position, the first character in a string has the index zero. So when I say index, it's just another word for position. So the character at index zero is the letter H. And then the character at index one is the letter E and so on and so forth. So now if we want to ask Python, we want the first character in that string, how can we do that? We can say message, and then you open a square bracket, and then you put the index that you're asking for inside the square bracket. So let's say we want the first character, so the index of the first character is zero. And then we close the square bracket. Now if we press enter, you can see that Python tells you, hey, H is the first character in the string hello world. What if we do a message two, for example? What do you think the letter will be? Yeah, it will be L, because L is the third letter in the string, and the third letter in the string has the index two. 
you can also store these characters in a variable. So for example, I can say first character is equal to message zero. And then if I want, I can say print first character. And as you can see, it prints the letter H. Okay, how about if we want to read the last character of a string? So if we look at our string here, hello world, we can see that the character D at the end of the string has the index 10. So we learned that if we want to do this, we can say message 10, we get the character D and we're done. However, there's a better way to do this. And this way is to use negative indexing. So instead of saying message 10 to get the last index, to get the last character in the string, you can say message negative one. And what this will do is it will return the last character of the string. If you want the second to last, you can say message negative two. And if you do that, you get the letter L. So if we look at our string, we can either index the string with positive numbers or negative numbers. Now, another concept that I wanted to touch upon is uh, something called string slicing. This is a concept that pretty much extends indexing. And uh, I think it's better to talk about it right now. So slicing means that instead of asking Python, hey, give me the character at a specific index, you're essentially asking Python to give you a substring, a part of the string, a smaller chunk of that string that starts at a specific index and ends at a specific index. So let's say we're asking Python to return a substring that starts at index one and ends at index three, including index three. So I want index one and index three to be in the final substring that is returned to me by Python. So to do this, you say message, and then you put in your starting index, which will be included in the substring. And then you put a colon, and then you put the end index, but the last index here is not going to be included in the final substring. So you're basically telling Python when you do something like this, when you say message one, colon four, you're asking Python to return the substring that starts at index one and ends at index four, but not including index four. So if you press enter, you can see that you get the character at index one, which is E, the character at index two, which is L, and the character at index three, which is L but you didn't get the character at index four. So what if I want to get the substring that starts at index two and goes all the way to the end of the string? To do this, you can say message and then two, which is the start index. And you can only put colon here and then close the bracket. When you do this, you're basically telling Python, I want the part of the string that starts at index two up to the end of the string. So that's what we get. Now, what if I want to return a string with the last character removed? So in the string, hello world, I just want to remove the character D from the string, which is the last character in the string. You can do this by saying message. And we are starting, we want to start the string from the first index, so zero. And then we want the index of the last string. We know that the index of the last string is 10. So this will return everything except the character D. A better way to do this if you really want to remove the last character of your string is to say zero and then colon and then negative one because we know that negative one is the index of the character D as well. So you get pretty much the same result. Even a better way to do this is if you're actually starting from index zero, you don't really need to explicitly type the number zero. Instead of typing the number zero, you can just put colon and then say negative one and 
it will return the same thing. So if you don't put in the, the starting index, it will be zero by default. So what I want you to do now is I want you to hop on your Python interactive shell and play around with strings, play around with indexes and slicing and just try to get the hang of it. And in the next video, we'll talk about more operations that we can do on strings. Specifically, we'll talk about string concatenation. It's a very important topic. So yeah, stay tuned and uh, I'll see you in the next video.